Hi guys, in today's video, we're going to be going through the history of the Liberni as a faction in RTR Imperium Serectum. This is taken from a longer interview video that I did with Jottle, one of the main historians on the mod team. So check that out down in the description below. But without further ado, guys, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the video. So now we're on to the Laburnie and we were just talking about it. I think one of the factions that I would love to play because they can become an absolute powerhouse in this region just based on their starting position and how many settlements they have with ports at the start of the game as well. Um, and these guys were pretty big time pirates, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, they are one of the older Illyrian peoples known to us. Um, of course, again, a, a bit of a um, controversial thing to refer to them as Illyrians um, because they are probably kind of their own thing. Um, and they are known quite early, like um, like I said previously, the Mate, the uh, Yapodes, the Desitiatus, they are, uh, in the sources they all appear quite late. Uh, mainly in Roman sources when Rome starts expanding into this area. Mm. But the Liburnians, they appear very, very early already in uh, Hecateus, I think in the um, 6th century BC. So um, wow. they are known to the Greeks already, to Greek travelers. Mm. And we have um, we have a source, a uh, pseudo uh, Skylex, who I think uses Hecateus as a source too. But um, who also who makes like a traveling guide along the coasts of the Mediterranean, and he also already mentions the Liburnians, um, which is kind of funny because he, he mentions the um, Istrians, the Liburnians, and then come the Illyrians in his statement. So the Illyrians just starts south of them basically, um, but um, yeah, they have all these little. Um, islands um, and a lot of settlements on them. Um, they have had a so called, um, I need to, uh, thalo <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Thalassocracy. Thalassocracy. Thal 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 yeah. Thalassocracy um, <laughs> pronunciation, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is um, attested. Um, quite early on because um, they probably ruled over the entire eastern coast of the Adriatic Sea in the 8th or 7th century BC and um, we know that they had all this influence because they did a lot of raiding on both sides of the coast uh, or on both uh, coasts uh, in Italy and in Illyria and um, there is this episode um, in I think Appian where um, the Taulentians um, help the Corcyraeans um, with the foundation of Epidamnos um, where we also have like the first account of the Taulentians existing um, because they resist um, the Liburnians and Epidamnos, which is uh, very interesting. Yeah. Um, they probably get beaten back bit by bit, um, and um, because they conduct a lot of piracy in the area, <laughs> they have influence in Italy and in Apulia, in, in southern Italy, uh, southeastern Italy, like the heel of the, of, of the peninsula. And um, the tyrant of Syracuse, um, Dionysios, he um, starts colonizing the Adriatic Sea. Um, he founds the city of um, Ancona, of Issa, and um, probably he's also the one who kind of reduces their influence in the southern and uh, central Adriatic Sea. Um, so they get weakened by uh, quite a bit, and then again um, by the creeping power that is the Yapudis. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so by the time we meet them again in the 4th century BC in pseudo Skulak, they, they just ruled over these islands um, and the many settlements on them. 
Um, but it's quite, they're quite interesting because, um, as I previously mentioned, um, even among the Illyrians, um, Pseudo Skulax um, notes that they are um, the ones that have r women as rulers, um, probably more along the southern islands, um, I think. Yeah, and um, it's also there where, um, with this episode that I mentioned previously with Barrow, um, in his work on agriculture, um, where he says that the Liburnian mothers uh, were seen carrying logs in one uh, wood logs in one hand and feeding their baby on their breasts in the other one. Um, so yeah, they were known to be more friendly towards women at the very least, um, though we can sometimes expect to, like, sources to um, uh, to not really tell the truth because um, they kind of want to make things more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, probably in relative terms they were um, more friendly um, or more equal uh, or women had more rights in, in like Greece or in, in Rome. Yeah. Um, but we don't really know a lot about them beyond that. Um, we know a few names of their gods, we know a few names thanks to inscriptions though um, like with the Iapodes and the Desitiates and the Delmate a lot of inscriptions only come during Roman rule and um, are like remains of, of the people living there but um, everything should be taken with a grain of salt in this area generally um, so yeah Rome also gets interested there um, for the operations inland um, so naturally, they try to conquer <laughs> the yeah. Iberians. And, um, this is not really a very long affair. Um, the n wars against the Iberians aren't really quite notable, um, which is kind of kind of sad. But um, what is interesting is that um, they have boats named after them. Um, cool. Uh, I think the Liburne are. Uh, is what the um, ships are called. These are little creek. Um, we we don't have yet. We don't have them yet in the mod. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, those are little quick boats um, compared to the bigger warships of the Greeks and Romans. And um, after Rome takes out Liburnia, they they also just annex all the boats and are like, hey, now we got a bigger fleet. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, really worth it. Um, so Rome also uses them against the De Mate. Um, we have, interestingly enough, we have the city of Promona, and um, it's really funny because I think we first had them for the De Mate. Then Mausolos came in and said, "No, um, in during Caesar's time, a Caesar, Caesar intervenes because the De Mate attacked the Liburnians in Promona." So then we gave it to the Liburnians because we can could assume that they had it first. Yeah. But then I found out that archaeolo archaeologically, Promona is a Dalmatian uh, fortress, Dalmate fortress, um, because it was found <laughs> archaeologically, and the Liburnians and the Dalmate built quite different styles of fortresses. Oh. And cool. Promona is. Seemingly quite clearly a Dalmate foundation. So, um, yeah, it was probably taken away at some point um, by the Liburnians and just they just kept it, or maybe it was given to them by the Romans yeah. uh, for being good little allies and then attacked by the Dalmate, and so Rome intervened in this, um, in this conflict. Cool. So, yeah, yeah, I um, like these guys. Yeah, I like them quite too. Um, the faction symbol is based of a stone relief of a um, naval fight. Um, it's one of the few um, depictions of the Liburnians we get in the area. Nice. And, um, this is one of the ship that, ships that is um, involved in the combat, so yeah. 
we took this as a faction symbol. Um, we kind of um, we couldn't go with a ship for every faction symbol because they yeah. all liked minting ships on coins. <laughs> yeah. Or depicting ships on their on their stone reliefs or on their um, on their belt plates. I mean, a lot of them, a lot of the Illyrians are sailors and pirates and um, traders. So, um, but I think it's quite fitting for the Liburnians because they are like the known pirate people yeah. in this area of Illyria. So, um, awesome. in my opinion, they had to get the ship. Yeah, I, I really like it. Anyway, I think it's really cool, um, and they get fittingly. Liburnian pirates, <laughs> which is cool, yeah. um, and they wield a hammer, guys. So uh, the Thynoi Clubman versus them will be an interesting fight. And um, if you want some, yeah, true. if you want, if you want some role players, Robert Baratheon or, or something like that, then uh, get the Liburnian pirates. Although I, you know, they're not that big hammers, but <laughs> they're still hammers. Um, very cool. Now I see why you want to. Now I see why you want to play them. You just <laughs> like uh, those with, with clubs. <laughs> yeah, basically. I like I like uh, blunt weapons. Um, so yeah, uh, these guys. These guys. I think as a as a play uh, playing them as well. They're going to be a powerhouse in this region. Uh, with the amount of settlements they start with, with the amount of sea trade that you can probably generate pretty quickly, especially if you go down to Issa, um, I think you could become pretty rich and even maybe threaten Rome if you want to, which will be a really, really fun campaign. So, uh, well, there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching the video. Of course, you can check out the longer video down in the description below. Make sure you do like and subscribe, and I'll see you all again on the next video.